So Janet, will you tell us about your kennel name? I know that you had two throughout your, your time in Collies, and maybe tell us about how those names evolved. Okay. Well, the first one is kind of simple. It was when I was a sophomore in high school, and the school bus stopped at a sign called Windmere. So Windmere became my first kennel name, and of course my first Collie that I bought, other than Cal, uh, was named Windmere Storm Cloud because his grandfather was champion to Cal and Storm Cloud. And in those days, we called it Tokalon, by the way. That's the second kennel name. Then I was out working and flying and finding a husband. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and following him on his Navy career around and back and forth between Hawaii and Virginia and California. Didn't do much for my breeding program now that I was home with a couple of kids. Um, so when I thought we had finished all our Hawaiian assignments. He, he went to Vietnam, but they used to park us in Hawaii. Uh, I went off, I picked an ad out of the paper. We were sitting in a, in a hotel trying to find a place to rent in Northern Virginia, and I picked an ad out of the paper. Lots of collie puppy ads in those days. It was 1961. And I called this one uh, person, and the man answered. He said, yes, yes, we have a lot of collie puppies come right out. This happened to be the Trimbolis, who had just bought Champion Arrow Hill, Oklahoma Red Man from Steve Field. They had also bought some other dogs from Steve Field, including a beautiful bitch, um, who they named, uh, and their kennel name was Jan August. So we trundled out there with my two kids and my reluctant husband in the car out to Upper Marlboro, and oh my gosh, this dog came jumping out of the back kitchen door, and I thought, I see something I haven't seen in years. And what was a long, lean head with a flat back skull and an attitude. And then they had a huge lot of dogs because they'd run out a whole litter. They were also cattle people. They had Charlotte cattle, and they were horse people, and they were real animal people. And uh, I went down the line, and I saw this bitch, and we just got her from Steve Field, and we're going to breed her to Redman. I said, I won't look at the rest of the puppies. When you breed them, please let me know. And that was Cindy. Now I have to find a kennel name. Uh, but I still, I left the Jan August on her. She was champion Jan August Elegance. And she was. She was so pretty. Anyway, <coughs> uh, Red Man died about 10 days later of bloat when the puppies were born. And now I have to learn about bloat, because you have to learn about these things when you... And so I went to the Irish Setter Club of America, because they have a heavy, heavy incidence of bloat, right. and got all their information, did research on it. She did bloat when she was four, um, and she did not die. She, she didn't go into torsion, and, and, uh, but then we got sent back to Hawaii she was bred in her second year, and she went back to Hawaii, and she's in season, and I cannot well puppies in a four-month quarantine. That's cruel. And so she lived out her, her years. She was my start over again. But to be. So when Bill retired from the Navy in 69, we flipped a coin, and instead of Northern Virginia and Washington, D.C., we landed back in the San Francisco Bay Area. The weather's a little better. I can't right. say that for the politics. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, the first stop off the airplane was Dover Sandy Tunnels. And I wanted to see, I'd been away for five years, and I wanted to see Black Hawk, and I wanted to see High Man of Arrow Hill, because I wanted to see if I could pick up what we lost in not being able to breed Cindy. And, uh, it took a couple of years, and I got to Earl Hill, Oklahoma. Uh, Mado's son, as little sister of the Earl Hill, Oklahoma tribute. And she was quite different. He was built on long lines, but as the genes roll, she was built on shorter lines with a dreadful structure, like a wolf. Tremendous, tremendous uh, length of 
and she could, she would, I'd take her on a bicycle, and she'd walk, run around the bicycle, and it, her, she had a little narrow chest. Everything looked like it was connected with little soft rubber bands. It was a very interesting structure. And so Sandy said, well, you, want, you can correct that in one breathing if you go to Blackhawk, but then you're going to smooth because the best puppies are smooth. Yeah. Uh-oh. So I brought her to Judy Vero Hill, which we agreed might be the second opportunity, and we did pretty well. Uh, but that's when I needed a new kennel name, because now we got Whitmere, we got Rosemere, we got all these mirrors, and Windmere's, well, we really hadn't done anything with it, so I changed. And uh, she had a, had a nice letter and to name the puppies. I decided we named them all after Cindy. She never had any of her children. And <clears throat> that's where the elegant is. I just took the last two letters off Cindy's name. So Janet, you had a special dog that you got um, late 1990s or the early 2000s. Would you tell us about him, please? Year 2000. Yes, ma'am. Of course, it's a her. Of you course, see, when I, I was that. a little kid, <laughs> you never had pet girl dogs. Oh, oh, I couldn't sell girl puppies, but things changed. And uh, this was a dog that was not a pretty puppy. She was a good puppy. She had big hanging ears. And Gail Kay called her the flying nun. <laughs> and she wasn't Gail's favorite puppy, but I had just lost uh, all my other dogs. In fact, it was right after Sunnybank and the uh, memorial, and my last dog is there, and I got that puppy. And Gail had this litter, Gail Kay. And I had started bringing, by, bringing puppies home uh, from Gail's, and I always bring a puppy home. If it turns out, we're in the dog shows. If it doesn't turn out, it's there for life. Right. Uh, with me. Anyway, I looked at this little, little brown person, and she's wagging her tail. She's so happy to be alive. It's just amazing. Her sister was very elegant and very lovely, and of course with Gail's, and there were just two girls in there. Well, if you don't have plants for her, and at about four months, I looked at her and thought, oh, wow, you're going to the dog show. She grew in her ears. And she just was the most incredible character. Would you believe an uncomplicated Kira Collie bitch? <laughs> that she would do anything and happy back nice and forth all the time. Thing. She would do anything I asked for, her hurting, all I had to do was think what I wanted her to do. She was so in my head, it was spooky. And we went to the dog show. Now she's summer coated. One thing about breeding schedules and things like that, when they come out summer coated, it's a hard time to go find majors. Uh, but she won every time we took her out. And it's just like, wow, I'm not used to winning. This <laughs> is really pretty. Fun. <laughs> and uh, her name is uh, Champion Chelsea Helga Crown Princess. And I so loved her when Gail repeated the breeding. I bought her sister. Her sister was an alpha bitch. Oh, strong minded person. And uh, she finished quite handily. And between the two, I was so afraid something might happen to Cindy or uh, uh, Carrie, that I didn't breed her. But I have her sister. And the sister to me had that sense. You know how you get a sense when you see a dog or when you work with a dog that it's going to be a producer? That it's not I mean, okay for the shows, but this one should be in the whelping box? Well, we bred Lindy to Liaison. Oh my, we tried to, and, uh, but the, 
but the Elegon now went on all the rest of my dogs. But uh, now Barbara, please, can attest to the fact that Mindy, and this is another lesson for breeders, that Mindy decided she loved Sammy, and <laughs> she disliked Anthony <laughs> to the max. <laughs> so after leaping through the roof of the shed, <laughs> Anthony and, and Cindy went off to the vets for a proper AI, which she objected to violently. <laughs> she gave birth 63 exact days later to five puppies with strong heartbeats that were the size of white mice. And what I have pondered that, the first one, which was a heart dog, she was very ultimate female, very sweet, and a Velcro puppy. Like, she's attached to me. But what I have decided, because both were young, healthy dogs, there was no reason for those baby puppies to go to the last part of their development and not gain weight and not gain size. And I was able to save two of them. And uh, Holly minored out quickly. And then there were no major street in California for two years. And again, summer coding. So um, she went, these were the last letter. They still have her sister, Angel. But I decided because of her total, Mindy's total aversion to poor Anthony, who was being a very sweet dog. <laughs> um, maybe we need to think. The mind is a very powerful thing. Was she trying to reject those puppies? And I think there's a strong possibility that some of the problems we have in breeding has to do, not just with body chemistry and the like, but the mental attitude of the individuals. That's really interesting. Well, that's why I wanted to share it, because you encounter the gall darndest things with no rhyme or reason. But there's always a reason. We just don't know what it is. And there's nothing new under the sun. We have had the same diseases, the same problems since the beginning of the collie breed, and in other dogs to other breeds too. And the cycle goes away. It's just the role of the genes. 